Tonight, we might ask ourselves, which God do we believe in? In the God of incarnation or the God of achievement? There is always a risk that we can celebrate Christmas while thinking of God in pagan terms, a God linked to power, worldly success, and the idolatry of consumerism who treats the good well and the bad poorly handy for resolving our problems and removing our ills. God, on the other hand, does not wave a magic wand. He is no God of commerce who promises everything at once. He does not save us by pushing a button, but draws near to us in order to change our word from within. Let us look then to the true and living God, the God who is beyond all human reckoning, and yet who takes away sin by taking it upon himself, who does not eliminate pain but transforms it, who does not remove the problems from our lives but grants us a hope that is greater than our problems. God so greatly desires to embrace our lives. In his greatness, he chooses to become small. In his righteousness, he submits to our injustice. This is the wonder of Christmas, not a mixture of sappy emotions, worldly contentment, but the unprecedented tenderness of a God who saves the world by becoming incarnate, a face of compassion and mercy, whose might is shown always and only in love, he comes close to us, tender and merciful. This is God's way of being. You are not a number, you are a face. Your name is written on his heart. Cast your cares on him and he will take care of you. He is looking not for your achievements, but for your open and trusting heart. A great teller of epic tales once wrote to his son, I put before you the one great thing to love on earth, the blessed sacrament. There you will find romance, glory, honor, fidelity, and the true way of all your loves on earth.